everybody, I am Katie and I would like to welcome you to my new YouTube channel. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a video for you on my favorite tools that I like to use when I'm styling, um, where you can get them, why I like them, all of that good stuff. I often get questions on what products I like to use, what tools I like to use, what are the easiest tools, what are the hardest tools, lots of different things. Um, I'm going to try and keep this video uh, somewhat short and sweet. I won't go into too much depth um, on each tool, but just kind of hit some basic points with each of them. I will be listing some links down below in the description for a lot of the products that I use, and uh, this way you can get some of your own. These tools are going to be super helpful if you are looking to style wigs of your own, whether it be for cosplay or the princess party industry, uh, which is where a lot of my business is placed, um, or if you're looking to do some restyles on some wigs that you have and you're not really sure what tools to go for. Uh, the nice thing too is a lot of these tools are super affordable. Uh, there are going to be a few that do have higher price points, but um, there are reasons <laughs> that they're super helpful, so I guess let's get started. Okay, so the first tool that I'm going to discuss, um, and it is something that I feel that every wig stylist needs, whether you are um, a beginning wig stylist or you are further experienced in your craft, uh, this is something that is going to just elevate to the next level. Uh, a lot of the times we see um, styling and product pictures, that sort of stuff on styrofoam wig heads. Now, the problem with these styrofoam wig heads is that they don't mimic the shape of the human head very well, especially if you're getting a female version. The female version of a styrofoam head tends to be extremely small. Um, it's going to be roughly the size of a child's head. So if you're styling for an adult, like, I guess um, you're gonna want to look for something that's going to mimic the size of the human head a little bit better this way you don't um, style the wig and then try to put it on and it ends up being way too small which is never good because if you spent so many hours especially if it's an updo uh, that's not something that you want to experience so I highly suggest investing in a canvas wig head as you can see here, mine is uh, currently wrapped in plastic. Uh, this is to protect the canvas and the cork underneath, and this tip was brought to um, my attention by one of my favorite wig stylists, Bobby. Um, he is Bobby Pins on Instagram. Uh, this has saved so many of my wig heads. Um, I have a couple of them that are super covered in product, and after being steamed for curls, they it just gets ugh, not nice especially um it's nice too to protect your investments so these wig heads when i first started styling and first started getting them they were upwards of like 45 dollars uh, nowadays you can find them on amazon for i believe around 25 and like i said i will post a link down below um and i will label each um, product so you know what it is but a canvas wig head is super 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 nice because like i said it mimics the shape um, of the human head. It's super sturdy and it's just a great blocking piece. This this can definitely help. It also has, as you can see on mine, I have three X's. These X's are just marking out the seams for um, the wig head and it helps to line your wig up so you make sure that everything is um, perfectly balanced, especially if you're trying to do symmetrical bangs, you know, like bell. Um, having seams and guides to go along with is perfect. And the nice thing too about covering this in plastic, if you find that the plastic gets dirty and grungy, you can just take it off and replace it. So this is uh, product number one. There are also other um, types of styling blocks out there. Uh, the reason I prefer the canvas one is it's not as noisy. There are a couple that are um, canvas, but they have more of a styrofoam on the inside. And I find those to be extremely oddly shaped and very difficult to work with. I worked with one once and swore them off and said never again. So this will be one of your best friends in your wig styling journey. The next thing after you invest in a wig head for your styling, um, the next thing you want to invest in is going to be a stand. Uh, now the, the kind of stand or tripod that you use is going to depend on your work area and where you tend to do your work. If you tend to work with um, like a dining room table or um, 
a desk, something that has a nice lip, on, lip edge on it and you're fine sitting while you're doing your styling, that sort of thing. One of these tabletop stands will work perfectly for you and this adjusts, it just kind of has like a crank wheel so you can adjust it to grip on the um, lip edge of your table. Um, this is what I started off using. It was super nice uh, because the wig was, you know, just at a perfect level and uh, it was perfect for me for updos, that kind of thing. This is what I often bring with me to conventions when I have to style my own wigs for um, cosplay conventions. Uh, only because it's super easy to travel with, I can just toss it in my suitcase and I don't have to worry about a big bulky item. Um, I don't use this on an everyday basis. I have a couple of them set up on a desk nearby so when I have a finished wig that's, you know, setting, I can just move it off and set it on one of these. It's out of the way, it's protected, it's, you know, safe. So these you can find um, on Amazon. This one was purchased at a local beauty supply store. This is uh, purchased at Sally Beauty Supply. Um, and their prices differ. They're not super expensive. Um, so if you're just starting off and you don't want to move up to a tripod just yet, this is a great option. Okay, so the other option for a wig stand is a wig tripod. I do want to say that not every tripod is created equally and um, price doesn't really let you know about quality. Really what you want to do is do your research in terms of the reviews. Who's had these before? Uh, what are their experiences with them, etc. I started off with um, pretty inexpensive, excuse me, pretty inexpensive uh, tripods. The problem I found with them though is uh, with as much as I was using them, the bolts were breaking um, when I tried to adjust the stand and I had to find ways to make sure that it stayed up and it was just super, super frustrating. Uh, I was then led on to um, by a friend about this super heavy duty um, tripod. Once again, this is one that I'm kind of testing out. I was super excited to get it this year. Um, I am impressed with it because it does allow me to adjust the height pretty easily. So it has two ways to adjust the height. You can adjust the three legs and then you also have um, a crank system here which raises and lowers the head. Um, however, I have found um, with as much as I use it, I really should have two that I rotate between. Um, this contraption here that allows you to move the head, I do find that it doesn't tighten as well much anymore um, because I use it so much. So um, this stand ran me $50 I believe on Amazon. I do think it is worth the money, uh, however I am still on the hunt for something even better just because it's a daily user. If you plan on do using this maybe two to three times a week with your styling, this would probably be a great option for you, especially because it allows you to stand up while you're styling, which I think is great. <laughs> As, I mean, for me especially, you know, going, uh, yeah, <laughs> so I won't elaborate. but. Um, I do love this stand and it has, the frame of it is great because I can put hooks on the frame and I can hang um, some of my styling tools, which is perfect because then they're right there and I don't have to go reaching for them. Um, the only other problem that I have encountered is the whole of my wig head is bigger than what they have here. So I just got some um, cheap drawer liner and just put it over top and that solves that problem. So it keeps the head nice and sturdy so it doesn't wobble while I'm styling. Okay, so another big tool that I use a lot for um, my process, um, I actually have two different kinds that I use, is a steamer. Now a steamer is great because it's going, it helps with restyling wigs, it um, helps with straightening wigs, it helps with curling wigs, there's, I mean, so many great things. It helps with setting wigs. It's they're wonderful. So I use two different types of steamers. I use a handheld steamer like this. This one is a Con Air version, uh, which I found at Target. I believe you can also get it online. It was, I think $25 for this one. I do wish with as often as I use it that it had a bigger water tank, um, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Uh, what's great too is it has this little doodad that allows me to hang it from the frame of my um, styling tripod. That way it's easy to grab, it's right there. The other steamer that I have is 
sitting off to the side, but this is a full-size garment steamer that you would often see in a retail establishment along, you know, stuff like that. I only use my full-size garment steamer when I'm doing roller sets. And the reason I do that is it's a little bit more powerful and I'm able to do multiple roller sets um, off of one tank, which is fabulous. And then on top of that, it uh, steams out my costumes. So it's perfect, it's <laughs> double use. But um, starting out, a hand steamer is great. There's lots of different options. I will list a link to the one that I have once again below in the description so you can choose from that or at least start your research on what kind of steamer that you wanna use. What is great nowadays with a lot of the wigs that you were able to procure um, for theater, for cosplay, for princessing, all of that great stuff is they are heat safe wigs. Um, now each company and each brand has a different um, temperature that their wigs are heat safe for uh, and most of them will tell you. Now I always say to err on the side of caution, if your wig says it's heat safe, start at the lowest heat that your tools work with and then work your way up. And always start with a piece at the nape of the neck because if something were to go wrong, it's a place that's not super, super noticeable. Or if you're working on a wig that has an updo, find a piece in the middle of the wig so when you're if you have to, for whatever reason, clip it out, um, when you put it into the updo, it shouldn't be noticeable or a, if it is noticeable, it's very, very minor. Um, now with heat tools, you can use multiple different heat tools. The steamer is a heat tool. I also use this hair fetish um, round barrel straightening iron. I got this at Marshall's and it was $25. The great thing about this straightener, um, with it being the round barrel, this is perfect for um, styling those swoopy princess bangs because as you're rolling the hair around the barrel, it's actually cooling it down, which is one step that people often miss when they're trying to curl their wigs, um, especially if they're using a curling iron, which is what I will move on to next. So for curling irons, I use various sizes of curling irons depending on the character that I'm working on. Um, my most used is a one inch barreled curling iron. This one, as you can see, has seen better days. It's covered in product, but uh, it is old faithful for me. So the biggest thing though with curling irons is if you are using a curling iron to curl a wig, you want to make sure that when you release the hair from the barrel, you're keeping it in the barrel shape and clipping it up so that the curl can cool. The reason you want to do this is wig fibers are plastic and they have to cool in order to keep their shape. So if you're just letting the curl fall down, unlike human hair, uh, the curl is just going to fall flat and we get frustrated and that's not what we want. So yes, I use various sizes of curling irons depending on the character, a um, round barrel flat iron for bangs and they just give great lift and mm, all right, the last heat styling tool that I use, um, and I haven't got to use it that often, but um, I'm hoping here soon to be able to do that, is this mini crimper. Um, it's by Bedhead, uh, by, Bedhead by TG, and um, this was purchased on Amazon, I believe for about $25. I used this for um, my Rosalina wig when I styled her for Yomacon last year. And the reason I decided to try this out is because I wanted to add a lot of volume to the wig without adding wefts to add weight. So what this is used for is crimping the, um, the roots of the wig. So it gives it some texture uh, and it really allows for a nice good tease to give you a volume without adding weight because we know that more hair just means more weight. So that is it for uh, my heat styling tools. So next what I want to talk about using is um, combs, various types of combs that I use to achieve the styles that um, I have. I will say disclaimer right now, I do not use a brush on wigs. I know there are different brushes that you can use for wigs, there's you know detangling brushes, that sort of stuff. Personally I've found that a brush is much harder to work with when I like to work with um, small sections of hair, especially when I'm detangling a wig for a restyle, which can be a very daunting task. And um, I like to work in small areas to make sure that I'm really getting through and getting all of the tangles out. Um, 
and just making it nice and pretty so I can salvage it and I feel like by using a brush I've seen a lot of people uh, brush it a, brush wigs a lot like their own hair and it, it just pulls big chunks out of wigs and it's not something that I want to do especially with it uh, a wig being an investment for people you know you want it to last as long as possible so to avoid thinning it out would be great so to start with this comb here is my old faithful I absolutely adore this comb I did the first time I purchased a comb just like this, um, I actually purchased it at Walmart for about, I wanna say two or three dollars. However, I found that the quality wasn't the greatest. The outer bristles were continuing to snap. So I actually found this version here, the tool structure version at Sally's Beauty Supply for about three dollars, three dollars and fifty cents. And this has lasted me for about a good two years and I have had no breakage. Um, I use this on every single wig and it it's awesome. Now the reason I do like this comb is you can see the black bristles and the red bristles. So there's two sets. What's great is this allows me to get into the smaller sections and get the knots out. Um, especially knots that are hidden and it's, this tool is amazing. They, um, they advertise it as a teasing comb, but I don't use it for that reason. I do use the end of it for sectioning hair, but yes, this is my go-to for um, combing out and detangling wigs, which I will be covering in a future video. So to help everybody out who has questions, especially with those curly wigs, because they get matted pretty fast. So the next comb that I use is this comb here. Um, this comb is, I believe, the brand is marked off, but it's a Conair brand, and this is actually a teasing comb, um, teasing with picks on the inside or on the other side. I use this comb for um, packing my teasing if I want to make sure that something like Bell's bangs, Ariel's bangs, uh, has lift. So when I'm smoothing it out, I'm not taking all of the teasing out. This is a great tool to use. Um, this also helps you move the hair in the direction that you want in terms of getting a nice swoop and um, working with curl patterns. I don't use this one very often, uh, but when I'm teasing, yes, this is my go-to for uh, packing down that teased hair. So the next comb that I use while well, I take the wig hair out of it, this is a Conair brand and as you can see it's got tons of product on it. This is a, I believe they call it a horse hair um, comb. So you can get these like this in a comb style. I know they also make it in a brush style. This is my go-to for teasing and for um, smoothing. So it's great because it gives, it collects lots of hair so you can get that nice rat's nest of a tease and um, allows you to smooth uh, hair down afterwards. This is also a great tool for flyaways when you are maintaining your wings. Um, if you just go over things gently, you can tame some of those flyaways with product and this little beauty. So moving on from combs, um, hair cutting shears. Uh, you're going to want something to cut uh, your wig fibers with. Now, for me, I use two different kinds of hair cutting shears. I have a really cheap pair and then I have a more expensive pair. Um, a lot like sewing scissors, if you are a seamstress or seamster, you know that there are really good pairs of fabric shears and then there are some that are just kind of mediocre. So the first pair that I use um, is just a really cheap goodie brand pair of scissors. This is kind of just my go-to if I have to snip threads or snip a section of wefting for whatever reason. This is just kind of my all. Uh, this pair was, I think, maybe $5 at Walmart, and uh, I had to get a new pair because mine were originally confiscated <laughs> in the Netherlands. So yes, these, uh, just a nice little go-to pair. Um, if you plan on getting two different pairs, definitely stay away from really cutting hair with these or cutting wig hair with these because they're going to get really dull really fast if you're cutting wefts or threads, you know, whatnot. Um, which is why I have a second pair. The second pair is also a goodie brand um, pair of shears. You can see already these are, you know, a higher quality. These were about $13 and I got these just at a drugstore. Um, and these ones are the ones that I use to cut my wigs. And 
these have been great. These have not failed me. Uh, the only time it gets a little bit frustrating is if I'm trying to cut a big chunk of hair, but that's a whole nother story. We'll cover that in another video. So yes, I do use two different pairs of shears, a nice pair for, um, cutting and then just a crappy pair for general, whatever stuff. The next things that I like to use, and this goes back to um, the canvas head blocking your wigs, that sort of thing, um, pearl head pins. So as you can see, this is technically called a three inch pearl headed corsage pin. These pins can be found, um, they have the pearl headed versions and they also have like a jewel headed version. It's kind of hard to see. So the pearl heads are super nice because they're super smooth. Sometimes you get these and because it's like a plastic top, uh, sometimes they have little um, bars on them and they can snag your wig hairs. But these are great for blocking your wigs because having them this long provides a lot of um, security. Now if you are blocking a lace front wig, you're not going to want to use these bigger pins. You're going to want to use smaller um, sewing pins because if you're blocking the lace of a lace front wig, a lot of times the lace is very um, small and you don't want to destroy that So, because that's what's giving the illusion of a real hairline. So um, yes, three inch pearl head pins. And I will do another video too about properly blocking your wig, um, or at least how I block my wigs on the pearl or on the canvas heads. So yes, pearl headed pins are great. These, you can typically get a package of 144 for, and depending on where you get them from, you can get them from Joanne Fabrics. They're about $7 a box. Or um, if you really keep an eye on sales on Amazon, sometimes you can get them for as cheap as $3 a box. I go through and buy these quite often because they help secure wigs to uh, styrofoam wig heads. And I tend to go through a lot of them. But another great tool to use is these little duckbill clips. These are great for sectioning hair, and this is just one version of these. They have multiple versions. You've got the big alligator plastic ones that you can use for sectioning hair. Um, these are great if you are trying to do or hold finger waves in place for Snow White, say, um, or if you're trying to get that nice swoop um, for Belle or Ariel. These are great just to kind of slide in there um, and secure the hair so you can manipulate it as you need and to get the shape that you want. Some, with every wig style um, that you are going to need, you're gonna need bobby pins. So um, bobby pins are lifesavers, I guess. And for those of us girls who went to prom or whatever, or weddings, and we sat for an hour taking 90 bobby pins out of our hair, I now completely understand why hairstylists have to use so much, especially with wigs. So. My go-to bobby pins, I use the Salon Care Professional. These are um, Supreme bobby pins, and these are the black. These can be purchased at um, Sally Beauty Supply. I believe you can also purchase them on Amazon. I will check for you guys and put a link below to whichever one um, has the cheapest price at the time. So this box generally lasts me about a month, month and a half, depending on which wigs I'm styling and how many of each wig I'm styling. I will use these pins for my um, black hairstyles and also my dark brown hairstyles. Uh, they tend to blend in really quick and really well. Now these, I feel kind of have a learning curve. Um, the way that they operate, uh, they're very tight. So it may take a few tries to get it to separate to get and put it in the hair where you want it to go. Um, but stay the course. I think they're super awesome, super grippy, super wonderful. And along those lines, these are the blonde bobby pins that I use, the Metagrip Premium Bobby Pins in Champagne Blonde. Now these bobby pins I use for all of my blonde hairstyles that require bobby pins, so like Cinderella. Um, and just like the black ones that I showed you, these have super awesome grip and um, tend not to slide out. Now I have found that if you try to crisscross them with a lot of hair in the middle, it doesn't work very well, so there may be an adjustment period with that. Also with hairpins, I love using U-pins. 
Now the color you use um, depends on whether or not you are actually going to leave these in the styling. Uh, I typically don't unless it actually calls for it and when it does I will use the appropriate color for the appropriate wig. These will help you to, um, much like the duck mill clip, clippies, um, these will help you keep hair in place, um, help you establish swoops and um, keep things nice and pretty without uh, running the risk of losing uh, your styling. So a lot of the questions that I get when it comes to my wig styling is what kind of products do I like to use when I'm styling wigs? This generally tends to change as I um, try new products. I find something that I really love um, for you know however long I might use it and then decide that I want to go back to whatever I was using because I'm not happy with the result anymore. And this also tends to depend and change on the weather. Sometimes when I'm styling things um, with Michigan, it, <laughs> the weather likes to change a lot. So one day it'll be super humid, the next day it's not. And this will change what products that I'm using just to make sure I'm getting the proper styling of my wigs. Now, wig products I feel much like heat tools and whatnot um, is going to change depending on the stylist. Um, I have heard that there are products that will literally eat away at the fibers of your wings. Um, I have yet to experience that, so I can't speak on that. I know that there are products made specifically for synthetic wings, which I have tried a few, and I will show you one that I actually really like. Um, but yeah, it really just, it depends um, on what you want to use. I suggest trying out a plethora of products and finding what's best for you. Okay, so working in the princess and cosplay industry, um, it's really integral that wigs hold up their style as much as possible. Now, there are certain factors that you can't control when it comes to wig styling and how well the wig holds up. Um, kids like kids have grabby hands, um, so a lot of the times, if they're not reaching for Elsa's sparkly bodice, they're reaching for her braid or Rapunzel's braid. Um, they want to touch your face, make sure that you're real. Uh, I know this from experience, uh, having been a party performer for a number of years. So, yes, <laughs> there are certain things that wig stylists can't control in terms of what kids do, what the weather's going to do if you decide to go out on a day when it's super windy and the wind decides to ruffle Elsa's wisps. There's only so much we can do to secure them. So, but these, moving on, <laughs> these are my favorite products for styling. Um, these are the ones that I use on a daily basis and tend to go through a lot of them. All of these products um, for me were purchased off of Amazon because I find it's the best bang for my buck. Uh, you may be able to find a couple of these in your local stores, but Amazon is king when it comes to getting these and getting them fast to my door, which I often need. So the first one I like to use, and a lot of cosplayers, a lot of wig stylists uh, will use this. It's got to be glued. The yellow can, super recognizable. Um, I don't think I have to go much into why I use this. I feel that it's a great product to add um, the, the structure to the hair. So. When using this, um, you can easily heat set it with a blow dryer on low after you've sprayed it and do that a number of times for spiking wigs, um, for keeping things just nice and pretty. So, got to be glued. This is probably the only product that I pick up at my local Walmart because it's available and it's actually the one, it's actually cheaper at Walmart than it is on Amazon. At least that's what I found. I could be wrong, but along the lines of or also in the got the got to be line, yeah, um, is this product. This has got to be mesmerizing spray. This is a texturizing hairspray. I used to be able to purchase this at Walmart. However, Walmart, or at least my Walmarts, don't carry it any longer, so I had to get it on Amazon. You can buy it by the single can on Amazon, but it's actually more cost effective if you have friends who are styling wigs and stuff to buy a, I believe it's a six pack of it. It actually comes up to cheaper per can that way. So I just buy it by the six pack. This product I feel is great, especially if you're working with a newer wig. 
Um, a lot of the times you can find that that wig fiber is super slippery and is just not doing what you want it to do style wise. Some people will use dry shampoo. Um, if it's a dark wig, I don't like doing that really just because I don't like the powdery texture, but this adds texture and is super awesome, especially when it comes to needing to tease a new wig. I find that this works really, really well. So this product here is one that I like to use um, when I'm finishing with wigs, and this is a beeswax um, spray. It smells super good. It's beeswax and sandalwood. And this helps with little flyaways that you might have um, after you tease something and it's just, it's great. Um, not everybody is gonna need to use this product. This is just kind of an extra that I like to put with my wigs. This um, was also purchased on Amazon and I had to purchase it in a three pack. Uh, links below. Um, this, I know there are a couple of these products. This is the one that I used um, pretty often when I first started styling wigs and I know a lot of people still use it today. This is a um, generic knockoff of Paul Mitchell's Fast Drying Sculpting Spray. So this one was purchased at Sally's. Um, I don't use it very often anymore, maybe once a month because I prefer my other products. Um, it does smell pretty good, so I guess that, that's a bonus for it, but I have a couple of bottles just sitting around because I don't like to use them. I just, I don't like the, um, the pump for my products. I would much prefer an aerosol spray. So that's one of the reasons I don't use this much anymore. So I did mention earlier that there are some products that are made specifically for wings, and this is one that... Um, I was led on to actually just doing some research on the internet. I looked for, you know, the best products for styling synthetic wigs and this one popped up with some great reviews so I decided to give it a shot. This is by Brandywine and this is a wig spray for synthetic and natural hair wigs. So this is a product that is on the expensive side. This runs about $6.22 a can. Um, so it's going to be something that not everybody is going to want to use. I, however, I like it. I tend to use Got To Be Glued first and then this is just kind of my final setting spray for my wigs. So those are the products that I use currently. I know that as I move forward with my styling, I will start using different products, especially when it comes to uh, spiking wigs, learning all of that jazz. But yes, that is currently what I use. Okay guys, so just kind of to wrap it up, I'm going to show you just a couple of more things that I like to use when I'm doing um, my wig styling. So as I mentioned before when I was talking about the Candice wig head and why it's best to use that instead of a styrofoam head, I will show you a quick size comparison. Here is a styrofoam head. They're so creepy. I hate, I hate the faces on them. Um, this is what I use to ship my wigs and store um, my cosplay wigs. After they've been fully styled, um, and this just helps keep the shape. I know some wigs before they're styled, even after they're styled, are shipped flat in an envelope, and that is just not good for the styling. So, but let me show you a quick size comparison um, between the canvas head and the styrofoam head. I'll back up a little bit. So as you can see, there is a huge difference in size, especially when it comes to the width of the head. And this one is just oddly shaped. Like, I don't know anybody who really has an oval head like that. Anyways, um, these are, these can run expensive and sometimes very hard to find, especially now that we're coming up on Halloween season. Um, but numerous places that you can get them from. I purchased mine in bulk from Amazon. Um, but yeah, so with this one, I will post a link to the ones that I purchased, but some research just might be needed for that. Uh, and another product that I have recently loved using, um, and one that I send to all of my customers who purchase Meg wigs because they are so heavy, is a velvet wig band. So these are great. They Velcro in the back so you can expand the size if you have a larger head. Not only do these help with heavier wigs, they make wearing a wig so much more comfortable. 
I don't know about you, but if I'm wearing a new wig or wig cap or whatever, um, I often get a line right here from the indent, especially if it's a heavy wig. So my Nurse Joy wig that I styled for Epic Cosplay um, is very heavy, especially in the back, so it pulls and left a mark. I actually had like a rug burn mark um, the first day that I wore it because I didn't wear this with it and it was, it was pretty painful. So, but these are actually relatively inexpensive. You can get packs of two for about eight bucks. Um, they come in different colors. They come in the dark brown, they come in black, and they also come in blonde. So I highly suggest that if you wear lots of different colored wigs, if you're a princess party performer, picking up a pack of um, all three colors, especially if you play multiple different characters. You know, you're gonna want a blonde one for Cinderella, Elsa, um, any of the light colored girls, and then accordingly for the other ones. All right, guys, we made it to the end. Um, so those are all of the products that I currently use while I'm styling my wings and some reasoning behind it. Like I said, I will go ahead and post some links down below in the description um, to a lot of the products that I use and products that I think will be helpful to you in your wig styling journey. If you have any questions, please feel free to go ahead and post them below and I will do my best to answer them. Also, I want to let everybody know that I do plan on releasing videos pretty regularly now that my schedule is pretty much calmed down. Um, I want to release, you know, how to detangle wings and, you know, just my methods and stuff. Those are questions I get often. But if you have any suggestions for any other videos you'd like to see me post, just let me know once again down below and I will do my best to accommodate. Thanks again for stopping by guys and I'll see you soon.